first method, the continuous trench, is the most common. It works by having a contaminated groundwater plume, which flows from the contaminant source, backfill, and pass through a reactive cell. It comes out the other side as treated groundwater, free of most of its harmful contaminants that it contained prior to the PRB. This treated water then goes on to be used downstream as animal and human drinking water, affecting the local ecosystems along the way. So it is important to remove as many of the harmful contaminants as possible. The second type is the funnel and gate method. This involves low permeability walls, which act as a funnel and directs the groundwater into the treatment zone. The biggest benefit of the permeable reactive barrier is its ability to remediate multiple pollutants at the same time as well as bring the level of these pollutants down to an undetectable level. The PRB remediates the water in many different ways. These include reduction, sorption, precipitation, and biochemical degradation. The processes that occur are determined primarily by the type of media used in the PRB. The contaminant plume is carried into the PRBs under natural gradient conditions known as a passive treatment system. Some of these reactive compounds present in the reactive cell include active carbon, sawdust zeolites, clinoptilolite, and polypsite. Sawdust zeolites are great for removing ammonium and heavy carbon contaminants from groundwater. Clinoptilolite has shown to have a high selectivity for certain cations such as ammonium, lead, cadmium, zinc, and copper. A recent addition to PRB technology is the use of denitrifying bioreactors, which serve as a biobarrier in agricultural and groundwater systems. This denitrification biobarrier converts leached nitrates into nitrogen gas. Studies have shown they can be used to treat other contaminants, including pathogens, pharmaceutical compounds, pesticides and phosphates from agricultural drainage, and perchlorate. The choice of the reactive material is generally influenced by the type of contaminants to be removed, their concentrations, and the mechanisms needed for their removal. The hydrological and biochemical characteristics of the aquifer must be assessed in order to determine the environmental and health impacts, the mechanical stability, and the availability and cost of the material. Treatment in PRBs can be both abiotic and biotic. In the abiotic treatment, neutralizing agents, absorbents, and zero-valent iron can be used as reactive filling materials, while in the biotic treatment, mixtures including cellulose, manure, silica, and others are used to reduce the bacterial activity by forming metal precipitates. A case study was performed for an old abandoned mine in southern Hungary. The site has an area of 163 hectares and has been closed since 1997. However, there is 20.3 million tons worth of mining waste confined into two storage pools. The concentration of uranium in these pools is found to range from 100 to 1,000 micrograms per liter. The danger of these pools is that the uranium eventually seeps into the groundwater below, creating potential health and environmental hazards associated with the toxic metal. Engineers built a classic permeable barrier consisting of a continuous wall with dimensions of 6.8 meters in length, 2.5 meters in width, and 3.8 meters in depth. The PRB consists of two zones, the first containing granular zeovalent iron, while the second consists of fine particle zeovalent iron. There are sand layers placed both up and downstream to improve the flow, and the PRB is secured by a geosynthetic membrane and is sealed by clay layers. In total, 38 tons of iron material were used. The resulting uranium concentrations in the water after it had passed through the PRB were measured to be less than 1% of the concentrations upstream. The estimation of precipitates formed are of the order of 525 kilograms per year, which can reduce the conductivity of the barrier in the long run to a 62-year lifetime.